Okay, so I have uh, most of the parts for the top uh, roughed out, ripped, and uh, some of them cross-cut. And I have the, um, all four uh, sections roughed out in uh, length and width for the, uh, for the uh, two saw horses of the four sides. Um, what I'm going to do now is take one of those and lay out the um, uh, saw horse and I'm going to cut it out with a uh, combination of tools. I'm going to use a, uh, a hole saw, a large one to make the big radiuses, a small one to make the small radiuses. The Festool track saw with a small track to um, connect the dots basically. If necessary I'll use a jigsaw to kind of finish it up and then I'll sand the edges. My plan is to make one the hard way, this way, and then use that as a template. So I'll use a router with a, uh, I'll either use a pattern bit or I'll use a template uh, with a straight cutter to um, take uh, the, the, the one that I cut out as a template and make the other three. So that'll save some time and it'll make them all uniform. They'll all be identical. If I, if I use a pattern bit, uh, the other three will be exactly uh, the same size as this one. If I use a template uh, guide uh, on the router, then uh, because the, the guide will add about a sixteenth, uh, the other three will be slightly different, but they'll be so close, and, and in this situation, uh, it's not like I'm doing a, um, a positive and a negative that have to fit together. So um, whichever one I, I decide to do will be, will be fine in this uh, application. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the plans and, and just uh, lay out uh, with a pencil tape and a straight edge here, lay out uh, the cuts I'll be making. And uh, plywood uh, that I use for this, um, some, some guys who've built uh, the bench have used uh, really pretty plywoods like a, a Baltic birch or a Russian birch. Um, I'm using uh, AC plywood and as I assemble the bench uh, I'll put the C side inward so on the sawhorses it'll be inside and since uh, I'll be using this one as a template and I'll be cutting it out uh, with saws and drills I think I, you know I may not get it exactly perfect as as w the ones I cut out with the um, a router will be so there might be a slight overcut so what I'll do it is I'll, I'll lay out everything and cut it from the C side and then if there is any overcuts or any minor mistakes uh, it, it won't show as much because it'll be to the inside when the saw horses are, are opened or closed that way. When you turn in these big bits you want to make sure you have a uh, you know it takes a half inch drill of course but you want to make sure you have a handle on it and really kind of grip it because with all those teeth um, grabbing that surface all at once it it really wants to yank the piece around you could clamp the board down as well but I, it's good enough with me putting my body against it here and really kind of hugging the drill just for a little extra safety without this you find that when it grabs it can really rip it rip it out of your hand and hurt your wrist or cut you so on the other side I've got where the uh, the pilot bit came through and so I don't have to worry about layout, I'll just drop the pilot bit in the same hole and just finish the cut. Okay, so the big holes are cut. And this is where I, I see a lot of finished carpenters uh, spend a lot of time and energy to try to make things perfect. And I, I've been there myself, been at this for 25 years. In a situation like this, where I've got all the holes laid out precisely where I want them, but sometimes things drift off a little bit. So my catch up here will be that if one of these holes has slipped a little bit off the line, like this one has gone over, you know, a 32nd, um, I'll just actually make the cut right on the radius. So being off that little bit, uh, you're never going to notice it uh, unless I cut it, you know, right to where the line is, then you'd see the radius cutting in into your line. So this is where you can just sort of uh, perfect it uh, just by eye lining it up uh, right to the radiuses. And you have to be careful here because, you know, you get the saw set up and you start cutting and forget and cut all the way through when really what I need to do is cut just into this hole and then I have to cut from this one to this one. So mistakes I have made in the past. Just be attentive and make marks 
where you want to cut and you don't want to cut. So I want to cut here, I don't want to cut there, and I want to cut there. So I'll know to there and here. So that's where I'll have to finish up a little bit with the jigsaw just because I can't complete the cut without going further into uh, uh, my finish uh, board than I want. Now with these smaller holes, I can't cut as far into them, so I will have to finish up more with the jigsaw. By using one long straight edge, I'm able to make sure that I have a nice straight line. This will be the top of the, of the uh, sawhorse where the bench rests on it, so I want to make sure this is you know, nice and, and parallel all the way across. And these uh, Festool tracks just don't move. I, I put my... Um, uh, hands on to hold them down, but they really don't slip at all. <laughs> 